So as we understand that we are dealing with Euclidean geometry in this term, and it is very, very important that you do understand your theorems so that you'll be able to answer typical questions that you'll be given uh, in your examinations. So in this question, we are given O is the center of the circle. Sketches are not drawn to scale, meaning to say this, you cannot measure it from D to C. You don't use your ruler to measure. It's not to scale. That is why they are telling you this. All right. Give reasons. Unless you are told otherwise, meaning to say we are supposed to give reasons on these questions that we are going to answer, uh, unless we are not told about that, all right, or unless we are told something else on that particular question. All right. Number one, we are given DC is perpendicular to AB, DC, this line, DC. All right. We, the first thing we are told that whenever we see O, O is the center of the circle. So in this case, we've got the center of the circle and there's a line DC, which passes through the center of the circle. A line drawn from the circle, which is the circumference to the circumference, to the other end of the circumference passing through the circle is referred to as the diameter. And from the center of the circle to the circumference of the circle, this is now our radius which is half of the diameter. So we understand that from our theorems that if a line is being drawn or if a line is being taken from the center to the circumference of the circle or to the circle, as long it crosses or as long it passes a chord like what we see and it is at 90 degrees as what is indicated on the diagram, this, this that just it cannot just happen. It cannot just happen. No. What is it that we know? We know from our, our theorem, number one, that if a line is being drawn from the center, all right, let me write this one. We need to understand our theorems. So we know this, a line drawn, a line that is being drawn from the center, uh, from the center, of a circle. So this is drawn from the center of a circle, uh, perpendicular to the chord, perpendicular uh, to the chord. So as long we've got something like this, uh, it bisects the chord, all right? It bisects the chord. So this, like I said before, it is not just ordinary. The moment you see this happening, you know that, all right, this line is going to bisect. To bisect this chord is to divide the chord into two equal parts. So to divide the chord into two equal parts, it means from A to E, it is going to be equal from E to B. All right? It is going to be equal uh, from E to the point B. That is to bisect to divide into two equal parts. So that's a theorem to be used. And that will be the reason uh, that we are going to use uh, in that case. All right, so there we are given, DC is perpendicular to AB, uh, like what we said before. So we ended up from this theorem saying that uh, from A to E, it is going to be equal uh, from E to B, from this concept, AE is gonna be equal uh, to EB. All right, then we are given in this case and cast AB at point E where DE is 18 units. The wall of this line, DE is 18 units. So we are given the length of DE from D to point E, this one. This is the one that we are given as 18 units. All right, then AB is 24 units. From A to B, that is 24 units. The wall of this line, A, B, this one is given as 24 units. That is the one that we are given as 24. Determine with reasons, 1.1, the length of A, E. So what is going to be the length of A, E? So on number 1.1, remember we said if a line is being drawn uh, from the center of a circle perpendicular to the chord, it bisects the, the chord. That is the reason that you're gonna dev there. So definitely, we are going to see that AE is going to be equal to AB. From what? From the line bisector. Since uh, 
since uh, DE, uh, let us just say OC, since from O to C, OC is the line bisector. So that line, it bisects uh, the, the line of what? The line of AB. The line of AB is being bisected into two equal parts. So if AE and EB are equal, Therefore, AE, the one that we want to calculate, it is half of AB. They are equal. It is half of the line AB. The same thing, if maybe you wanted to calculate EB, it is going to be half of AB because it is two equal parts. So one, it's half. Another one, it's a half. So half of AB, we are given AB is how many units? AB is 24 units. So this is going to be a half of 24 units. So that is half times. Uh, 24 units so that is going to be 12 units at the end half of 24 uh, that is going to give us a 12 so that is the length of ae that is the length of ae 12 units all right on this other question we are given on 1.2 if the radius of the circle is x units express oe in terms of x from O to E, this is the part that we need this one in terms of what? In terms of X. How is that possible if the radius is X? So if the radius is X, it means uh, this is our radius, guys. Our radius uh, to be X, meaning to say we are referring from O to A, it's the radius. We are referring uh, from as long as it is to the what? To the circumference of the circle. From the center to the circumference of circle at C. So it also means O C. It also means all D, all these. It also means all B from O to B. All these are a die. So that is the radii concept. These are the same as X. We are given that radius is X. So meaning to say from O to D, it is X. From O to A, it is X. From these two, it's, that, that is the concept. So we are not going to focus on major things, on, on many things like, we are going to focus on where OE is found because we see there's a lot of X, a lot of X that are going to be there on our diagram at the end. So where is X situated? I mean, where is the OE situated or where are we having OE? From O to E, it lies on the line DE. If we are to check, it lies on DE. OE is found on DE. That's what I'm trying to say. It is found along the line DE. So if that is the case, that it is found on DE, it means, all right, remember we said O to D is the radius and it is X, all right? And O, E is the part that we want. So if you combine these together, these two, if you add O, D plus O, E, Together, you combine these two, they give us the D O from D to O. Or let me just explain like this so that you understand me properly. From D to O, then from O to E, if you combine this, you obtain the D E, the wall of this line D E. That is what I'm trying to say there. So as we need this O E, this one, and we know that D O, is the radius of the circle, take note, from O to the center, uh, to, to the circumference of the circle, this is the radius of the circle. So if it is the radius of the circle, that means it is X, because we are given that the radius of the circle is X, plus OE that we want to calculate must be equal to DE, and we have the length of DE. Originally, we were given this length as 18. So that means we can calculate OE, all right? So we can transpose this because we need this in terms of X. So if we transpose X to the other side of the equation, it carries a negative on this side. So it is going to be 18 minus X at the end. So that is our OE at the end. So meaning to say from O to point E in terms of X, it is going to be 18 minus X. This portion that we see, this piece here that we are seeing here, it is going to be 18 minus X. That is the idea there. That is the idea. Okay. So you have to be very, very careful on that one. 1.3, calculate with reasons the value of X. All right. So how can we calculate now the value of X with reasons? All right. So I want us to consider this. Uh, if you are to see 
properly here, we are going to notice that we now have a right angle triangle. So in this case, from this concept triangle, uh, that's okay, this was 1.2 guys. This is now 1.3. So triangle uh, or E, A or O, A, E, whatever the way that you're going to take is a right angle triangle. Is a right angle triangle. So this one is a right angle triangle. Remember, we talked about this reason. So, uh, guys, there, like, th that is it. We, we know we talked about that. It's at 90 degrees perpendicular. So that's that's a 90 degrees. So you can you know, apply what? Apply Pythagoras theorem. So using Pythagoras theorem, uh, or from Pythagoras theorem, we are going to see that uh, o a remember Pythagoras theorem c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So c squared is the hypotenuse, which is o a. So it means o a squared is equal to a and b. These are the shorter sides, uh, which can be o e squared plus a e squared. So the reason there is we can use or we can apply that is Pythagoras theorem. All right, from Pythagoras theorem. From uh, Pythagoras theorem. So this is from our Pythagoras theorem. So as we mentioned before, uh, that this is at 90 degrees. So therefore, this is a right angle triangle. So let's see what's going to be, uh, what, what's going to happen here. Remember, in the previous case, we calculated AE, this one. So we now, have, we have this one. So we're just taking this triangle. This is the triangle that we are taking. This is 12. So it's like that. All right. So we're just taking a piece of a triangle from the whole diagram that we have. We're just going to take this piece of a triangle that is being formulated from point O to the point E uh, to the point A, where AE is 12 units uh, from A to O. Remember, this is the radius. Wherever you see a radius, you see what? X units. And OE, we calculated this in terms of X. It gave us 18 minus X. So as you can see, it's a complete diagram that you have. And it's a right angle triangle that you're given. So you can use your Pythagoras theorem, like I said, from this um, part. So remember, OA, which is X squared. So it's going to be X squared is equal to OE squared. That is from O to E. That is 18 minus X squared is uh, plus, I mean, uh, a is squared from A to E, that is 12 squared. So this is going to give us X squared is equal to, remember, you can expand these. Uh, guys, remember your theorems from grade 10. A minus B squared is equal to A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. So that is um, the first term squared, which is 18 squared. Uh, that is that is um, going to give us 200, uh, 400, it's actually 400 this one, 324. Yeah, 324 if you square this properly. 18 squared minus 2AB means minus 2 times our A, which is 18 times our B, which is X. So this will give us minus 36X. All right, so that is we've got a negative 36X here, negative 30X uh, plus B squared. Our B is X, so that, gonna, that is going to be X squared. Plus 12 squared, that's 12 times 12, which is 144. So if we were to collect the terms uh, on the right side of the equation, we are going to be left with uh, 324 plus 144, which was going to give you 468 uh, plus, all right, so let's just take this, minus 36x plus x squared. So if you were to consider this properly, like let's say I want to transpose this x squared this side, or I want to transpose this x squared this side, you are going to see that either way, this x was going to cancel x squared. This is going to be x squared minus x squared. So that will be a zero there. So meaning to say at the end, the x squared was simply going to cancel. So this is what you're going to be left with. And with this, you can even transpose the negative 36 x to the other side of the equation so that it becomes a positive 36, which is equal to 4, 6, 8. So how am I going to solve for x? Remember, this is a linear equation that you now have. So you can simply divide by 36 both sides, thus determining the value of x. And in this case, our x was going to be 13 units. So that's the numerical value of x. The numerical value of x. So this, we obtained it from the Pythagoras theorem as we saw that we are formulating, or at the end, 
we are having a right angle triangle. And from that right angle triangle that you're given, you can use your Pythagoras theorem, calculate anything that you have and know your expansion of brackets, all right? You, those expansion of brackets, A plus B squared is equal to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. So guys, please just revise as much as you can. Uh, that is very, very important. So we shall have similar questions of this nature from our past exam papers also uh, to cater your revisions towards your exams also. So do so uh, that you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss those classes that you're going to have. And I also want you to try this question so that in our next class, you will be uh, having solutions at least to take from. So this is the next question that you're going to have in our next class. So make sure that you become part of that. Subscribe so that you don't miss any of those classes that you're going to have from Maison African Motives till we meet again.